This Saturday is Veterans Day, and our guest is Kenneth Al- Excuse me, Kenneth Allensworth. He is the VA Medical Center Director. Kenneth, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's uh, talk about what the VA Medical Center will be doing in honor of Veterans Day and uh, what, you, what your plans will be. Well, uh, in terms of uh, events uh, connected to the Veterans Day, um, celebration we have uh, started last week we had a 5k run on campus um, we had uh, I believe 150 160 participants um, we had uh, veterans and adaptive um, uh, cycles we had a, a CLC a nursing home resident um, who was uh, aided he was in a wheelchair and he was aided by one of our staff and he finished we had kids uh, um, in running in memory of um, family veteran members. That was a great event. Um, we had our homeless stand down um, also on Saturday. And um, we're very fortunate to be partnering uh, with some of the other local events. Um, there was an Unsung Heroes uh, event uh, here a couple of days ago. Um, thank you uh, for having us here to speak about uh, Veterans Day and what we do every day for veterans. And, you know, there's an event here in uh, War Memorial Park uh, on Saturday. So there's been quite a bit that's been going on. Very nice. Uh, how many veterans do you see at the VA Medical Center on an annual basis? Uh, we have uh, about uh, 39,000 uh, veterans that receive some sort of care from us um, every year. How far away? 30, 30, 39,000. 39, 39 to 40,000. And what states does that encompass? Uh, you get Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia? That's right. That's exactly right. How many people work at the VA Medical Center? Uh, we have about uh, 2,100 uh, staff members. Um, we have uh, almost 2,300 with volunteers and contractors and uh, part-time employees, so it, we say roughly about 2,300 team members. What is the mission of the VA? It is very simple, and it's a, it's a very honorable mission. It's to care for those that have borne the battle, and for their for their widow and for their for their orphan. A few years back, we heard so much uh, bad news <clears throat> about VA centers around the country. Uh, not so much locally. There was uh, some news, but not so much locally. Has most of that been addressed and cleaned up? Well, you know, with with every organization, there are going to be opportunities to improve what they do. And VA, and I believe rightly so, um, uh, is a a public trust. Uh, Being a a branch of the... uh, part of the executive branch, a department um, that reports to the president, uh, we rightly so uh, have a lot of oversight and visibility on what we do. So when um, anything may happen within VA, um, we, we tackle it head on and we, and we fix it and we look across the enterprise to make sure that that uh, is resolved uh, at all VA medical centers. I, I'm proud of our um, history and our legacy and our our um, uh, customer service, our public trust scores here, for example, are almost 93%, um, which is above the VA average of 90%. Uh, so our veterans, uh, although they will um, identify opportunities <clears throat> when things may happen, uh, by and large are very happy with the care that they receive, and we're very honored to continue to do that for them. John Gilstrap. Is Walter Reed the next nearest medical center? Uh, Walter Reed is actually a, a Department of Defense facility, and um, <clears throat> if we're talking about VA medical centers, uh, I would say that the closest ones to us would be uh, Clarksburg, West Virginia, uh, the one in Baltimore, and the one in D.C. Those are the closest VA medical centers to us. And I, I've never visited the, the VA medical center, so I'm kind of flat-footed here. Is it... With, should I be thinking about a hospital in my head? Is that what? We, we do have a medical center here based at Martinsburg. We also have <clears throat> um, a lot of outpatient activities. 
um, both here on campus and throughout uh, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. We have seven points of care uh, beyond the uh, medical center here on campus. Um, and if you'd like to come out and visit, uh, give my office a call, and we'd love to show you around. All right. I will do that. Now, if within the, the VA medical center system, if a veteran has a, um, I don't know, it's a specialized condition where a non-veteran would go to Sloan Kettering or to Mayo Clinic or, or something like that, it, it, will the VA pay for that additional level of care, or is it like an HMO where the VA care the veterans care through the VA has to be at a VA facility. Well, I don't know if you want the short answer or the long answer. <laughs> Let me see if, I can, if I can modify this. So uh, the VA, uh, starting from the end of World War II with General Bradley when he became the administrator, uh, developed uh, relationships with local um, academia and with local health care providers. So VA has had decades uh, of relationships with community providers in connecting veterans to care that may not be readily available at that specific VA medical center. And that continues. With the Mission Act that was signed into law in 2019, that greatly expanded the authority that VA has uh, to provide care, uh, the right care, the right place, right time to our veterans. And it gave us a lot of um, additional authority to provide that care uh, to veterans despite um, regardless of their eligibility. Um, so the short answer is yes, we do partner with uh, non-VA uh, providers and with non-VA healthcare institutions uh, to connect them to the care that they need. Matt Miller. What are the specific services that, that are available at the VA here in Martinsburg? And as you were mentioning, services that, that may not be that you can work with local facilities, um, do you also then work with those nearby VAs, say, in Baltimore and D.C. and the like? I'd like to answer your second question first, and the, it's absolutely true. We do connect with uh, D.C., we connect with Baltimore, Clarksburg, Pittsburgh, Richmond, Virginia, and we also have a long-standing uh, relationship with Department of Defense. So, for example, to your earlier question about Walter Reed, we do send some veterans to Walter Reed, uh, predominantly for uh, neurosurgery. Um, <clears throat> we have a full complement of primary care um, outpatient services, we have inpatient medical surgical care, we, have, we provide most surgical specialties here to include orthopedics, vascular surgery, we have inpatient psychiatry, um, we have outpatient mental health, uh, we provide home-based primary care um, to veterans who <clears throat> are less ambulatory and need for us to go into their homes and provide that care. We have one of the largest nursing home activities in VA right here in Martinsburg. <clears throat> we also have one of the largest domiciliary activities, which is uh, residential rehab, um, residential treatment. Uh, we have the largest facility for that activity on the East Coast, and I believe we're the second largest in, in VA uh, right here at Martinsburg. We have over 80 buildings here on campus. It's about a 175-acre campus. In January, we're going to celebrate 80 years of serving. Uh, those that have been in uniform, as you may know, this started out as an Army hospital at the end of World War II. And um, January of uh, 2024, we'll, we'll celebrate uh, 80 years of caring uh, for those that have borne the battle. So we're very honored and and excited to uh, to celebrate that. Do you uh, pick up or, or help those who are outside of our area to be able to come to the local VA Medical Center? As we talked earlier, you, you mentioned four different states where veterans are coming from to be served here in our area. We, we do have a patient transportation network. Uh, we have um, uh, volunteer drivers as part of that uh, that will assist. I will tell you that if any of our listeners are interested in joining that cadre so we can continue to increase uh, the transportation of veterans uh, to appointments, I would very much appreciate that. Uh, our volunteers do a great job in helping uh, those veterans who may need um, transportation assistance. 
Um, so we do provide it, and we could always um, have more uh, volunteers uh, as part of that. So to, to qualify for uh, VA treatment, ongoing VA treatment, is there a minimum number of years or service? Or, and you also have the phrase you've used is born to the battle. Uh, if veterans have served during peacetime or if they were in non-combatant roles, do they still qualify? Great question. The short answer is yes. They have to have uh, uh, completed a, a term of service, and um, that is predicated upon uh, quite a few factors. Uh, namely, if they were um, injured on duty or if they completed a full four-year uh, term of service or if they were a guardsman reservist and they, and they uh, completed that service as well. So there are a lot of pathways by which someone who was in uniform could be determined eligible uh, for VA health care. And I would encourage anyone that's interested to um, check us out online at va.gov eligibility. Uh, or come talk to us in our eligibility office. Kenneth, oh, good. John, you have a follow up? Well, I was just going to ask you to expand on the transportation assistance in case people want to do this. Are you asking people to bring their, their own vehicles and transport people or to drive VA vans? Or how, does, how does that work for folks who are interested? Yes, thanks for clarifying that. No, it would be our network of vehicles, um, either a government vehicle or um, with our long-standing partnership with DAV, uh, they donate pa patient transport vehicles. Uh, so any volunteer that's interested, we would train them. Um, and then we would uh, put them behind the wheel of one of these vehicles and they would uh, use that to transport our, our patients, our veterans. Kenneth Allensworth is our guest here on the program. He's the VA Medical Center Director. Veterans Day is uh, going to be observed on Friday. Schools tomorrow will be closed and local government offices, Veterans Day itself is on Saturday uh, this year. Uh, Kenneth, I want to talk to you a little bit about burn pit victims and, and whether you're seeing any exposure locally. I was speaking with the Secretary of State in West Virginia recently on the program, and he confided that uh, his son lost a good friend to cancer from his exposure to burn pits. And I know Congress addressed this with some legislation a couple of years ago. Well, I first of all want to thank you for having me come out last year uh, when the PACT Act was signed to talk about this. Indeed. I, I think it was one of the most significant uh, pieces of legislation that that allowed, that provided the authority for VA to um, conduct these screens and provide this care uh, for burn, burn pit exposure veterans. And uh, my heart goes out to uh, to the Secretary of State and his family uh, for, the, for their loss. Um, we have uh, completed over 29,000 uh, screens here uh, at Team Martinsburg. Um, <clears throat> about 29%, don't quote me on that, that's a ballpark, 29% of those that were screened had some um, possible connection either by service or by symptom, um, and those have all been reconciled and I believe about uh, a third of those, so roughly 10,000 or so, um, have been identified as possibly having a, a connection. So I, I'm very glad that we've been able to do that. We've reconciled uh, 93, almost 94% of those screenings, um, which means we've been allowed, uh, authorized, and our team has um, done an outstanding job of connecting them to additional care as a result of those screens. Um, so again, my, uh, my call to the community is if any veteran has not yet received that screen, we encourage them to come in and, we, and we'd love to talk to you about that and, uh, and connect you to that care if it's needed. Before that legislation was passed, what were the options for these folks with their health care? Um, well, we always have, have provided care, but what the, the PACT Act did is it really added those additional presumptive conditions uh, to eligibility for uh, service connection. Um, uh, it has also allowed us to provide additional um, uh, services uh, specifically to burn pit or toxic exposures. Um, so I think the, the largest benefit is, you know, not only the full court press and getting them screened, uh, but also connecting them with the Veterans Benefits Administration 
uh, to uh, acknowledge that service and to get them the uh, compensation that's uh, deserved as a result of that exposure. The last study that I read showed that 22 veterans a day take their own lives, commit suicide. I don't know if there's been a more recent study on those numbers that you're aware of. Can you address that and what the local VA is doing to help veterans who are experiencing difficulties? I would not have a VHA average um, from the 22 per day. I would say that it is, has decreased. Um, we have um, a very good suicide prevention team that helps the rest of our uh, team members uh, identify, uh, communicate with, and connect to veterans who could possibly be at risk uh, for suicide. Um, we have a lot of community support in that as well. We've had, we had a recent mental health summit. Uh, where we had mental health leaders and community leaders, elected officials come on campus and we talked about um, what suicidality looks like in our community um, and uh, as a subset certainly for veterans. Uh, we recently had a, uh, a suicide prevention walk on campus uh, to, uh, to raise awareness. We had a lot of participation uh, from the community in that as well. Um, our team is very well trained uh, when we recognize veterans who may be at risk uh, to engage. Um, the 988 number that was recently uh, activated, uh, I believe, has increased um, the number of calls and therefore, you know, the ease of con connection uh, for someone who may be at risk or a family member that, you know, is concerned about a veteran that's at risk. Um, <clears throat> We um, have, as a result of that, I believe a very solid approach to caring for our veterans. Uh, and I would encourage, uh, again, veterans who may not uh, have considered um, coming in and talking to us and enrolling for care with VA uh, to please do that. Uh, because there are, unfortunately, still veterans that, uh, that complete suicide and they're not receiving care. And we'd really love to to provide that care to them that they've so richly deserved. Matt Miller. You mentioned all of the, the great care and uh, what goes on at our local VA Medical Center and uh, how strong it is. Are there still things, though, that from the inside you see that, that uh, as a country we could do to better support and, uh, and take care of our veterans? Um, well, staying on the, on the topic of suicidality, you know, I would, I would encourage us all as, as Americans to just, you know, recognize the symptoms and don't be afraid to communicate and reach out and connect uh, uh, veterans or anyone that's at risk uh, to the crisis line. Um, make, let's make sure that uh, as, a, as a community we are identifying uh, our fellow citizens and certainly in this case our veterans that are at risk and connect them uh, to the care that they need. Um, that's uh, one thing I'm so proud about with this nation is that we do care for those uh, that have uh, put on the uniform and defended this country and there are a lot of resources there and it's really a matter of just connecting them. Um, My VA 411 um, is a great uh, phone number uh, to uh, share with anyone who has questions about VA. I believe it's 1-800-MY-VA-411. <coughs> Uh, that provides uh, uh, the caller um, with someone uh, on the phone. It's not a recording. It puts you in contact with someone who can answer a lot of the questions that people may have um, about benefits, uh, access to care, uh, nearest facilities, et cetera. And um, that uh, is a great place to start. So, uh, you know, the MyVA411. Uh, be familiar with that, the 988 number for the crisis line, and VA.gov um, provides a lot of information as well. Do we have a reasonable estimate, or, or has there been a survey done to know what the veteran homeless population is, Ken? Are you speaking about nationally or locally? Uh, I'll take either bit of data that you might have if you have okay. either. <clears throat> well, well, nationally, um, you, you may know that uh, a lot of the 
uh, data is driven from um, a myriad of data data sources that that determine where the homeless are by zip code and by age and veteran status, gender, et cetera. Um, and a lot of that, um, for example, starts off with the point in time count. Um, and we participate in that, VA participates in that. That's usually done every January. Um, and our team members, for example, will um, uh, come in and meet, and it's usually done, you know, the during the dinner hour, uh, early evening, and we uh, go through our communities and we um, go to uh, known homeless communities as well as uh, areas where uh, we may not as a community know where homeless people reside. And we, we do an outreach, we try to uh, connect to them where they are. Uh, that helps us identify uh, where, where homeless people are. Uh, in each of these communities, uh, we have. Can can I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to jump in here real quick because we're gonna run out of time in about 40 seconds. I'm sorry to throw that your way with not enough time left. Perhaps we can sure. you know, follow up on this in the near future. Uh, uh, real quick, if you could again, can you tell veterans how they get in touch with you at the VA? Our primary number is 304-263-0811. Um, and they could uh, ask for. Um, uh, they can go through our phone tree and connect to eligibility, uh, connect to primary care, connect to mental health, um, and we'd be glad to, uh, to make that connection for them. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you all. Take care. Ken Allensworth, VA Medical Center Director.